Okay, so my name is Jacob uh, and this is Nathaniel. Um, and together we worked on the Rubik's Cube solving robot. Uh, so the basic idea of the robot is we want it to be able to take a general state. Uh, we want it to be able to determine the state of that state, uh, apply a basic solving algorithm to it, and then actually implement that solving algorithm on the state. Uh, so the robot is actually capable of determining the state of the one that reads all the edges, one that reads all of the corners, um, and then once it's determined the state, uh, it can then apply the solving algorithm, which is all done on the FPGA. Um, and then after after they get, that gets finished, it'll actually use six stepper motors to uh, turn each face of the cube in order to solve the Rubik's cube. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about what I did. Uh, so my part of the project was mostly mostly the uh, physical side of it, while Nathaniel worked more on the algorithm side. Um, so I worked on the I2C interface between the, uh, the color sensors, the RGB color sensors, to determine the state of the cube, um, as well as the interface with the stepper motors um, and the serial communication between the computer and the FPGA um, in order to allow us to debug random bugs with the program. Um, and so um, the first thing that I worked on was the uh, module for actually determining the state of the Rubik's Cube. So as uh, Jacob said, there are two color sensors. Uh, there's one that looks at a, a corner piece and one that looks at an edge piece. And by applying uh, known sequences of moves, we can expose uh, any given corner, say this one here, to the color sensor at the corner piece down there. Uh, by doing this, we can see all of the different uh, corners and edge pieces. Uh, the center pieces are actually held in place by the mechanism of the cube and determine what side or what color that side will be, so you don't need to look at them. Uh, but anyway, by looking at the, uh, all the different pieces, we can determine the initial state of the cube. Uh, once we have that, there's a uh, module called Solving Algorithm, which is essentially a finite state machine where each state is a different step of a method for solving the Ruby state. Uh, this method breaks it down into uh, seven different steps where you start from just a few pieces to going layer by layer until the cube is solved. Um, additionally, I uh, wrote a module that uh, updates the internal state of the Rubik's Cube based on the moves it wants to execute. So uh, rather than executing moves and then trying to redetermine the state of the cube, uh, the update state module takes in a string of moves and the state of the cube and applies uh, transformations to that cube state according to those moves so that the internal representation matches what the state of the cube would be after applying those given moves. I think that's it, right? And here's a demonstration. So it's got the first layer solved. It's working on the second layer. Go, robot. You can do it, robot. I mean, I don't know yet. I'm probably wanting to do it. I've done a lot of work. I want to go up on the top. And then maybe I'm going to get more of it. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. All right. Um, did you start? Is that switch already? That's yeah, the turbo one. On, yeah. All right. Oh.